Joining me right now with his reaction is the host of Cudlow right here on Fox Business, Larry Cudlow. Larry, it's great to have you this morning to get your reaction to really where we are right now. You see this new low in initial jobless claims. The good news keeps on coming from the economy. You wonder if it gets dampened by new policies. But how would you assess where we are today with regard to growth? Well, the first thought is we're in an economic boom. Uh, there's no question about that. And my uh, watchword is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'm worried that the fix provided by the Biden administration, if it passes, is going to throw a wet blanket on the economy uh, later this year or next year. But for now, it's a boom. It's vaccinations. It's going back to work. The only glitch, I think, uh, in these uh, jobless claims numbers, and I just put this out there, we got to get them down to, you know, 300,000 or less. Lots of unemployment assistance is tallying uh, higher wages, higher uh, total assistance for not working than for working. Uh, you know, the more unemployment uh, assistance, the more unemployment you're going to get. The longer the unemployment assistance, the longer the unemployment is going to be. Now, I don't think that's been a major factor, although some reports from Salt Business suggest it is. But I'm just saying down the road, these assistance programs end in September. Uh, I hope they are not extended because the economy is doing so well. Let, let nature take its force in the free enterprise economy. Well, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, Larry, right now so many companies are having a hard time finding employees to hire. Uh, it's, it's, I guess, a right. good problem to have. But part of the reason is there's all this stimulus being thrown at people. They're making more money to just stay home. They don't want to go back to work. And so it's, it's one of those unintended I mean, consequences of all of this stimulus. That's right. It is unintended. Um, it's, it's a road we've traveled before in tough periods. Look, I think most people, Maria, do want to work, okay? Uh, you know, work is great. Um, Work is um, work is holy, if you will. People want to work in America, but yeah. people are smart. And if they're being paid more to stay home, then uh, they'll stay home. I mean, I think they want to come out, but they may stay home longer. A lot of small businesses are reporting this. They can't find, uh, you know, good workforce. You see it in the diners, particularly uh, small restaurants, small hospitality operations. So. I want to keep a positive view, and I do think every part of this economy, retailing, housing, capital spending, uh, it's all booming. It's a terrific story. Just yeah. leave it alone. That's yeah, my but, point. But I don't Larry, want to have to tax we, everything we that moves. Exactly. We also have to spotlight policy because policy can either help a situation or it completely destroy a situation. Let's talk about this wild spending plan that they're calling infrastructure. Republican senators discussing a counter proposal to President Biden's infrastructure slash spending plan. It, they want a 600 to 800 billion dollar deal that actually looks at infrastructure and helps our roads and helps our bridges rather than 400 billion on home care for the elderly or 300 or 500 billion on R&D and manufacturing and trading. All of this stuff that's just, you know, a boondoggle for the Democrats to, to put money uh, for the areas that they'd like to put in. They're calling it infrastructure, Larry. Your reaction, where this is going? Yeah, well, I've been um, speaking out against the Biden infrastructure plan for a lot of the reasons that you just mentioned. I think the Republicans are smart. There should be around $650 billion. It could go to $800 billion. Uh, I don't have any problem with fixing the lead pipes in schools, and I don't have any problem with um, increasing uh, broadband fiber and so forth. I don't know that it needs $100 billion, but whatever. And if, if you have a more manageable package, then you don't have to raise taxes on corporations, large and small, and you don't have to phase out uh, all these um, uh, international uh, taxes from, you know, going from 10 and percent to 21 percent, which is crazy. That may be even worse than the rate hike to 28. My point is company tax hikes will lower investment, will lower productivity and will lower real wages. Glenn Hubbard had a good piece today uh, stating this view in the, the Wall Street Journal. So if you go the GOP route, you don't have to raise taxes. You rely on toll roads, 
on user fees, on local bonding, on P3 private-public partnerships, that kind of thing. And you won't upset the economic apple cart, and you won't throw a wet blanket over this fantastic boom. I hope the GOP stands yeah. up and fights for it. Well, I mean, there are so much going on right now, Larry. As you know, I mean, the, the loudest voices in the room are these activists trying to create narratives against the Republicans. Right now, on the Georgia voting law, they're trying to muddy up Georgia ahead of the Senate race in 2022, so Raphael Warnock keeps his seat. Florida Senator Rick Scott wrote an op-ed for Fox Business this week. He's warning businesses not to virtue signal in the wake of the MLB moving its all-star game out of Georgia. So Rick Scott writes this. It turns out that power does corrupt, and you have become corrupt. American taxpayers will soon stop tolerating your lies, your attempts to denigrate them. This, as Home Depot is now facing a boycott, for not speaking out against Georgia's new voting law, Larry, not a word on H.R. 1. Not a word from the MLB on H.R. 1. Not a word on H.R. 1 from Delta and all of those other companies that rolled over uh, by the loudest voices in the room, the activists. Well, look, uh, Major League Baseball pushing the All-Star game to Denver, which, by the way, Colorado has more restrictive voting laws than Georgia. Um, Delta, Coca-Cola, you know, they cost the city of Atlanta probably $100 million or more in business sales. So that's really kind of a tragic because Atlanta is, as you know, predominantly black-owned businesses. It's a great story, and they just damaged it. Now, I think that these companies ought to stick to their knitting. In other words, they should fight hard to stop tax hikes on them, to stop regulatory burdens on them. This is something that they know a lot about. These are financial issues. Uh, you don't want to cripple companies through higher taxes and regulations. What's that going to mean if you do that? That means fewer jobs, lower wages. All right, so it helps everybody. It helps the owners, the shareholders. It helps the uh, workforce. It helps the stakeholders in the community who depend on some of these big yeah. companies. So I would say they should stay with their knitting, do what they do traditionally. You know, the Business Roundtable has actually uh, put out some very good things on this. Go for the yeah. tax issues. Go for the regulatory issues. Maybe go for the energy issues. But once you get involved in social policies, you're going to be in trouble because uh, half your customers will like it and half your customers will hate it. And that's not good yeah. for business. Especially when you're talking about something that you didn't even read the bill, because there's absolutely no way you would have said that Georgia's voting law is restrictive had you actually read the bill. So there's that as well. But let me bring Bob Nardelli into this, Larry, because, Bob, you were the CEO and chairman of Home Depot for a long time. Home Depot tried to stay out of it. They didn't want to get involved, and they got slammed by the activists anyway. Thank you. Uh, I'd be very fortunate to uh, have a boycott on Home Depot. I know Craig Muneer and his leadership team, Maria, have done a fabulous job during this pandemic. They've kept 400,000 associates employed. They provided incentives and accommodations. 2,000 stores across the country, as Larry said, uh, providing, providing necessary product during this very challenging time. The word stakeholder has been around Home Depot for a long, long time, Maria. This is a corporation, for example, that has put millions of dollars into Habitat for Humanity, millions of dollars into Kaboom playgrounds around depressed areas. They have hired 35,000 veterans over the years. They're doing all kinds of work. They shine their brightest when communities are facing their darkest hours due to natural, disaster, natural disasters. So it really would be unfortunate to, to really penalize 400,000 associates that are depending upon Home Depot for their livelihood. You know, if you talk about punishing corporate America, remember, these are corporate employees that are working day in and day out. So if you're angry about a CEO or the board of directors, remember, there is a trickle down here to the hard-working associates that show up every day to take care of the customers in the communities in which they live and work. So it would be very, 
very yep. unfortunate, Maria. Well, well and said, remember, Larry, you remember, word, Maria. Let me just left. let me. Yeah, let me add to my friend Bob Nardelli. The workforce predominantly lives in the communities. So you're affecting stakeholders and businesses and restaurants and movie theaters and whatnot that depend on the local workforce. Why penalize them? It doesn't make any sense. But these companies should stay with tax and regulatory issues. That's what they're there for. They shouldn't get involved in social issues and election issues. You're right, Delta and so forth. None of those guys, including Jeff Sonnenfeld, ever read the Georgia voting bill when it was finally published. So, look, let's just enjoy this. Boom. Okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my advice to policymakers yeah. in Washington. And Maria, you keep your voice nice and loud. I like it that way. We have to fight back. Yeah. All right. And I think you're spot on, Larry. I know you've got a big exclusive on your show today. We're not going to miss it. Check out Cubba weekdays beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern today.